Hey everyone, welcome to our local sauna. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, today is Wednesday, May 29th, 2019. The time is exactly 2 p.m. Calling this meeting to order. Attending our commissioners, Duncan Brooks and Filios. Do we have any changes to the agenda? I hear of none, so we are going to proceed with the fiscal year 2020 budget review, specifically session two of our sheriff's organization. And this will be a general discussion as we struggle to get situated here. Okay. Just ignore me. That's okay. Thank you. So if I We're just working through some logistical issues. We're working through here. some uh, ventilation issues. Yes. Yeah. And to make everyone more comfortable, I think our conversation will be a lot. In case you're interested, it's only 77 degrees in here. What's that? And rising. Yeah. And rising. <laughs> we don't allow exhalation in this meeting. You can inhale, but that's it. <laughs> Well said that. I think that's what you have. Nobody, nobody else Let's said that. Let's not go that. there. Okay. <laughs> a lot of hot air in this room. A lot of hot air in this room. I didn't make that joke. I don't want anybody to say that I did. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank Dina, you. are you ready? I'm ready. Take it away. Thanks, commissioners. Up on the board, you'll see our agenda for today. On the far right, I put in a proposed order of items. Uh, to go through. This is the sheriff's meeting. The sheriff is well represented today. So we had some follow-up items from our last meeting. So I thought we'd kick off with those and then we could go through each separate summary of the sheriff's ask items and have a discussion and the sheriff could uh, give you more detail on uh, any items in question. I will say that from now until the end of tomorrow, we have five hours blocked out for the sheriff. This gives us ample time to go through everything. And since the sheriff's budget is the largest budget and has the most capital asks, that we have an opportunity here to really make some good progress on the budget right at the outset. So everybody's in the room who needs to be in the room and I think this is just a golden opportunity to be able to talk about specific items and outline priorities. So with that, I'm gonna pop over to our recap email. There were some open questions. We brought in some travel supplements. I don't know if we wanted to walk through travel supplements. Captain Street had brought some more information on uh, the new soft code program. So, um, did you want to, Captain Street, talk more about the soft code program? This is, uh, for, as a reminder, this is a new program that's okay. going to cost about $216,000. This is for the civil department, and the board had asked for some extra information on that soft code program. This is the one that does the wants and warrants. Uh, Yes. Okay. So here is the email that was sent to you, but I'll let Captain Street. Uh, I'll defer to Captain Smart. Okay, yes. Captain Smart. <laughs> Since he knows more. So I, I think the the biggest question you guys had was what kind of cost savings we would have by eliminating current computer programs in place uh, to help for future um, annual maintenance costs and those types of items. And and I, I gave you a lengthy email still justifying other needs for stop COVID. Based on that, we have right now two programs that we would be eliminating for cost, which would be 3,581 for QuickBooks, 5,018 for a Spillman module, as well as the, the intent is also to eliminate a large majority of our overtime, which is currently at $10,000 um, this year at 60% of the way through. And so that would be equating $18,662, and our yearly maintenance fees would be $15,000 each year. So we would actually be coming ahead by eliminating those two programs in the overtime, the onboarding our yearly maintenance of soft code. Now obviously soft code is a large ticket item up front, 
And again, we are looking at ways to offset some of those costs for the next five years. We've talked to Darren Murphy with the prosecutor's office about uh, re readjusting the sheriff's fees that we charge. It's been two years since we have done an adjustment on those, so we're eligible to, to relook at those, as well as we have a placeholder right now of a technology fee, and although we can't call it that, we would still call it a processing fee that we are allowed to implement in there as well to help offset the large chunk of the upfront cost of this. Now again, I would just put this out there that it is a high dollar item, however, we're not just talking about um, the dollars and cents, we're talking about the taxation right now in the office, the overtime, the burdens that they're going through on a daily basis, that this would greatly reduce those things as well, uh, you know, and take a lot of pressure off that, that division. <coughs> Questions? I would just add two, if I could. Yeah, go ahead. Um, from what I've read of this email and just talking to the sheriff's office, there is, like uh, Captain uh, Smart said, there is some revenue potential. Plus, with, with fees and staying more current and more automated, the workflow would be much better. There would be less backlog. Um, more automation. Uh, right now, I. As I understand, the current processes in the civil division are pretty manual. There's a lot of manual processes, a lot of room for error. Right, yeah, if I could just some more on that too. Yeah, we, sure. So right now we are we're using a lot of hand computation still and many accounting processes in there because the Spillman system just doesn't have the processes in place to account for those types of things. We've talked to IT about what Spillman can do for us in the future. And even if Spillman were to take up uh, this mantle and try to push forward with it, they're still talking about two years before they would roll out something that would significantly improve the civil module that we currently use. Uh, two years ago, we also had an internal audit done. Uh, Melissa Merrifield came in. We had about 21 items on there. A majority of those would also be solved by using soft code implementation, uh, allowing us more time for second checks allowing better uh, accounting records and accountability for those types of things. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fine leaving this right now. Uh, it seems very, um, very important for the future. So there would be some other things that i rather look at that maybe they could do without. Okay, uh, <coughs> quick question. Um, <coughs> I can see where the savings come in on a recurring basis, year mm -hmm. over year. How much of those savings, can, or, or will there be savings available to help offset the initial cost of the 200000 Only by adjusting the share of fees and adding that processing fee that we're talking about. So let's say the program is 200000 Go ahead. The hope is that we would adjust our share of fees to recoup at least half of that over the next five years. So although, again, it's an initial hit up front, we're hoping to recoup some of that cost down the road so it doesn't look quite as daunting. It, it looks about like 18000 a year from what you said well, about overtime and spillman and QuickBooks. Yes, now that is, that's separate from, that is just if we leave things right now as they are mm -hmm. and don't adjust our sheriff's fees, we would be able to compensate and cover the annual maintenance of soft code, but we wouldn't be able to do anything about the upfront cost. Right. If we look at adjusting our sheriff's fees, we can dig into that upfront cost and recoup some of that. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm fine. Enough said, yeah, let's go on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, move on. Oh, and bef before we leave this subject, we did talk to district court about this program, and they're estimating that it would take some more time for them. It would add some more work to their, their side of things by using software. Mm -hmm. So, was it because um, I think uh, the cash was in the tally to try to be with you? How did Mr. Court be with you? Um, I can't remember if she was in one of the meetings. That we did demonstrate soft code to both the prosecutor's office, and I don't know if she was in on that one with the district court as well. Um, basically, their Tyler Technology is heading up soft code, and that's what the district court uses as a Tyler Technology product. Odyssey. Big Odyssey. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, there is some integration that's in place, but we truly, and they'll, until they come in and sit down with us and say, this is all the processes you guys do, 
they may be able to help on that end some more to streamline stuff, but it may also be either a stalemate or if, if they're saying on their end, there might be something, I'm, that's the first time hearing that it's actually gonna tax their office more um, of whatever that would be, I don't know, because we were, we still would be submitting stuff through a Tyler product e-filing, which is separate from soft code. So I'm not sure about taxing that office. I don't believe, I don't believe it would. Okay, and maybe we can just meet up with Tyler. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Right. But there would be some integrations, and you know, as we've seen with Odyssey, we're having integration yeah. issues with some other things too. But this is one where and that could increase just, costs. You know, that could impact costs right. over time. I'm guessing that those integrations would be built either custom or they would come up with some kind of a software fix. But Got that's it. also a consideration in overall cost. Thank you. Okay. And sir, sir, if I could add one more thing. Yeah. We did add, right at the end of our budgeting process, IT advised that this would require additional server space and stuff, which would cost $50,000 more. We looked into that with soft code a little bit, and it seems like that might not be fully uh, again, that's communication part with our IT and soft codes IT. And unfortunately, sometimes you have cops in the middle trying to navigate these waters. Mm -hmm. And so I think if we got those two together, we would actually find that those would be reduced, you know, so that overall 50,000 would probably come down because it's not fully, we need a $50,000 server and all these things. Soft code already has budgeted some of that in up front. It's just a matter of two IT personnel getting together and actually talking about what that would entail. Okay. Thank you. So should we add to follow-up items to talk to IT about um, what it would take for server space for soft code? Yes. Yeah. Please. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. back to the new program requests. Yeah, One on. of um, the board's uh, questions was um, about the dive rescue team and um, increasing uh, the ask separate from the restricted vessel funds. So, um, yes. Yes, Commissioner, Matt Street for the record. Um, one of the things that, that I walked away from our last meeting was a request for additional statistical information. We had provided one year of data, and I believe it was Commissioner Duncan that asked for uh, three or four years uh, worth of data. And so, and I'll just kind of start in the 2014-15 voting season. There were nine dive calls, two were voting related, seven were not. And all of this information was emailed, to, uh, I think, at least to Dina. Okay. I'm not sure if she forwarded it. Yeah. I to. Um, in 2015-16 season, there were eight dive calls. Two were voting related, six were non-voting related, uh, like drownings and things of that nature, cars in the water. In the 2016-17 season, there were 16 call outs. Three were voting related, 13 were not voting related. And in the 17-18 season, there were 22 call outs. Four were voting related, and 18 were uh, not voting related. And in the document that was provided, it actually breaks down what the details of each call, at least in title, and then a, a report number. Like, for example, this one says uh, uh, suicidal subject in the water, Lake Court Lake, and it provides the case number, so if you need additional information about that particular call, we can look that up. Uh, so that's uh, the information uh, that was has been provided since our last meeting. You know, if anybody has any other questions, the, I think the, the main focus here is just trying to separate out and have it be, become a standalone program that's not solely funded by the vessel account. What happens if we cannot do that this year? Um, well, then we, what we would continue to do is to try to uh, fund, you know, part of that activity with whatever we could justify in that restricted fund. We have to have some sort of nexus right. to the voting program. Mm -hmm. And so throughout, I think, at least my career at the Sheriff's Office, it has always come out of the vessel account. You know, if we needed a new dry suit or something like that. And we just recognize that it's, you know, based on this statistical information, it's probably not fair to the vessel account and the boat, the boat owners that are out there to be basically carrying on of this. I get that, but. I would strike it. Soft code versus dive team. That's, that's your discretion. Yeah, because we're not doing away with the dive team. We're just saying we can't separate it right now. Correct. 
So that would be my recommendation. Strike it. Strike it. Mr. Bill, strike it. Can you hear me yell yes? <laughs> <laughs> He's getting to you. Okay. Yes. Yes. I'm going to make one comment on yeah. this last. And Matt, you're going to have to help me a little bit on this. Are we running into any potential legal ground between going, pulling money out of the, the vessel account, the non vessel, or blending that together? Is there any issues there? I believe there is, but we would just have to manage that to where we we can, I guess, justify the expense out of the vessel account. We just have to make sure that we're checking that box and we should be cautious about spending money out of that fund that isn't directly related to voting or has some connection in some fashion. For the record, I wanted that on the record. We're going to do the best we can to manage it. I yeah. just wanted to know that that is potential. Yeah. Okay. Pulse point, I don't have a problem with. Uh, I'm okay with that. All right, the next follow up item is a. Uh, what do we do with it? Excuse me. What do we do with the biometric? The I iris detection? That's. Is that in the new program? Yeah, that's in the new. Yeah. yeah. The last item. There you go. Yeah. When it was brought forth uh, before to come out, the initial request to come out of asset forfeiture, I wasn't convinced that the technology is, is uh, worth that money right now. So it would be my opinion to scratch that one too right now until more solid uh, things can come forward. Yeah, we're going to have, we're, there's a lot of worthwhile things. I don't think anybody's saying they're not worthwhile. But in order to do those things that we feel are essential, there's going to be some of the worth, worthwhile things that are going to be put on. And I would agree with that one. I mean, I'd love to have it, but you know, when we go through it, I'd love to have, love to have, love to have, love to have. Who, do we know who, and not necessarily only, only law enforcement, is using biometric <coughs> technology successfully? Have the airlines implemented it? They haven't implemented it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, Airline, in, in Idaho, Canyon County's the only county that's using it right now. It's successful for them. Uh, back east is where it's mostly being used right now in law enforcement. Uh, it's the Customs and Border Patrol. Mm -hmm. Customs and Border Control. Border Patrol. Mm -hmm. Did you want to strike it or do you want to get more info on it? I, I'd like to strike it. Strike it. There's two. Because okay. it was only it was only a couple months ago that I reviewed this and looked into some of the details. So I wasn't. Dan, yes, sir. The drug forfeiture thing. I'm not sure what nexus that you're trying to draw to the drug forfeiture. No, no. I'm just saying that it was brought forth this same system, and I reviewed it then. I see. Yeah, that's all. Fair enough. Thank you. Okay. Should we move on then? items sitting in uh, new programs. Did you want to talk about those while we're here? I'm, I'd like to keep recruitment bonuses at this time. Uh, if we got to visit it later, you know, to make sure that we're in the black and not in the red, then I'm fine. But right now, I'd like to do that. Um, Pulse point, I'm, I'm, I'm not for that. I mean, Chris has delved into a little bit more than I have. But Tell me about that. Yeah, what Pulse Point is, is um, if there's a, a 911 call and it's a medical emergency, basically what, uh, when you get the 911 call, the dispatcher actually, uh, in addition to calling out the necessary emergency personnel, actually accesses a point, well, how do I put this to you, where it identifies the nearest defibrillator so that the fastest, the fastest response can be provided at that point of medical care. So it was actually not just being recommended by our own law enforcement, mm -hmm. by uh, Chief Warren as well at Putney, at Putney Fire and Rescue. And he actually brought in the young man who identified it was an EMT and pointed out how it's being successfully used in other locales. So I actually think it's worthwhile mm -hmm. as a life-saving measure. I think it's something that sounds to me like it would be much more 
useful and used in a more of a metropolitan, I can see it being used in Seattle or maybe even Spokane. But here, uh, presumably, the responders are going to have that kind of equipment with them. Uh, no, not necessarily. But yeah, and you can't make a distinction between urban and rural here. Why? Because it, re it doesn't really factor into the equation. The fact of the matter is it's basically alerting them to the nearest point where they can access the equipment. And it's not just the emergency responder. Sometimes the person who's the first responder, if I'm using that term generically, is a lay person. And for that lay person, it's identified where the nearest defibrillator is. So does, can anybody else jump in and help me out here? It's essentially hooked to uh, an app item as well. That's what it and is. So it's sending out a notification to those who sign up on the app. That's the one thing you got to remember too, is people actually have to sign up on the app. But it would send notification to them saying, someone near you is having a medical emergency, you know, and then they would be able to jump in and help, you know, right away because they would, they would know where it's at around them or close proximity. Um, and so that's really, it, it's similar to, you know, what you would get for your Amber Alerts right now, which many people are hooked up to, but, uh, or like our Everbridge system that we try to push out. But if nobody signs up for it through the app, then it will not behoove us. It's, you know, it's got to be people signing up through the app as well to receive that notification on their end. Is that a yearly cost? That part I do not know about. I believe the 10000 was just up front, I believe, and then 8, it's, it's 8000 continuing costs. 8000 recurring? Recurring, thank you. And 10000 initial. Commissioner yeah, Kim, Kim Edmondson, for the record, um, I think one of the significant differences is our rural nature. And when you are out in a rural area, uh, knowing where that access is is very important. We looked at uh, a number of different grants to try to put uh, the AEDs in our vehicles, and um, we haven't had any success with that at this point. But something like this would make it more accessible in those um, more remote areas, usually metropolitan areas. You've got restaurants that have them available and so many places. That's what I'm thinking, they're more available. But somebody in that kind of distress in rural Rathburn, you then leave them and run off to get a, a unit? Well, it's going to depend on the situation. Right. You know, exactly. what I'm saying where, is, where they're, sometimes you might save a life yeah, faster doing that than Sometimes you, you might lose a life waiting. by leaving the, yeah. leaving the patient and not continuing CPR until the ambulance gets there. Yeah, it's going to depend on who, who shows up, who's exactly. that first responder exactly. on the scene. So. But that's the benefit, I think, is just our remote area. I'd like it, but again, I don't have a favor of it. Not this year. Leslie? Yeah, not, not this year. Okay, cut. I don't mind being outvoted once <laughs> occasionally. <laughs> because it goes with the territory. Okay. Okay. Twenty-three minutes on the first one. Okay. So do the rest. We're going to leave alone, right? For now. Okay. Okay. Oh, on to the next one. So I believe I was not present, but I believe there was a fleet management meeting yesterday. Yes, ma'am. And that we're still waiting for some information so that the auditor's office can do a lease versus buy analysis. So for the purposes of at least the um, uh, Ford Interceptor uh, squad cars, we probably should have pulled off on that discussion until we have more information. There are some other capital asks here that we can review. Uh, where I've highlighted in green, there is restricted fund balance available. Um, for E911, if you refer to your cards that are in the front part of your budget book, and if you don't have your budget book, right now the restricted E911 fund has a balance of $3.1 million. That's what. And the vessel fund currently has approximately 200000 However, some of that vessel fund money does get used for grant match. But there is approximately $200,000 in there for the vessel fund. So there are these green highlighted items. 
that you could choose to fund with restricted fund balance for any of these uh, projects or items that you would choose to approve. And if I could, commissioners, just mention that on the, right on the E901 fund, I don't believe we are asking more than what we expect to bring in on revenue mm -hmm. as well in that year. So, so, you would so essentially, that balance. essentially, we wouldn't be pulling anything from our fund balance. So in 2020, you'd be spending the amount that you anticipate for revenue. I believe we were very, very close in, in that. I have okay. Look okay. Exactly. okay. Um, so yeah, at this point, then I would say that we could take those one, two, three, four, five items and, and put them over to the restricted. I'm sure if I. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, go right ahead. Uh, one item I do want to make sure that we also note though is that the 911 remodel reconfiguration project yes. is tied to a 911 ask as well because it's split 50 50 from the ops budget and the enhanced budget. Okay. And that's for the basically the desks and the, a lot of the uh, furniture type stuff that Colin can only cover. 50% of the enhanced fund for that, okay. the rest of that stuff. Dina, then can you mark that first item that it uh, it has other consequences? Sure. Thank you. So the, so just the remodel, or is the roof also part of that? No, that is a separate. Okay, so this is marked. So so would you be willing to approve then this uh, remodel, other tax funds? Well, that's what I'd like to, when we get to that line item, we can revisit it. Okay. Commissioner, are we right now just focused on the enhanced stuff? But I got a question about the rough and also uh, about the coal barn we're trying to build. And uh, I don't know if that was the time to ask. So, is it coming up later? Or? Yeah, let, let, well, yeah, let's take it up later. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Dina? Yes. Going down to the interceptors? Yes. Uh, I don't mind going out on a limb on this one and putting in a figure, even if it's just a placeholder for the first year's cost of leasing those vehicles. Uh, uh, what was the figure we got yesterday? Was it 240 or 250,000 for 10? I Anybody remember? Yes. Um, I calculated 20 at half a million, like five. Uh, if we if we purchase 20 vehicles yeah that's just what i put it in take it down to 500k and we can always modify it later mm -hmm. a new quantity would be 20 and not 15. Mm -hmm. yes but it would be for three years they wouldn't get any cars for three years Ooh. so if they got 15 this year cash then then the next two years we'd have to see about funding them but if we did the lease program and i'm just throwing it out there sure, we sure, haven't sure, sure. talked about it yeah. so Dr. Andrew, like sure. the, uh, is there any room to, to maybe make that 25 cars <laughs> uh, i don't i don't have the math in front of me now so if we say the reason i say 25 uh -huh. Because at the end oh, of that period, yeah. that is, let me take a step back. One of the, the, the problems when I talked with the sheriff yesterday, and I think perhaps I, I told you in an email today about it as well, is that it, we've tried this this lease program before, and, and I think it's a good idea. But the problem that we got into is another board came along and said, well, we're not going to buy the car. And, right. and I realized the same things would hold, hold true whether we were purchasing or leasing. Right. But, you know, when, when I sat down and tried to pencil things out, you know, 25 cars is going to probably put us obviously in a little better position than 20 simply because it's that many more cars that's going to last that much longer. So that's 542,000. So that's only 42,000 more potentially over the, uh, each year. So an additional 40 grand each year. Yes. All right, put it in. Thank you, commissioners.
Okay. Where to, Dina? Well, it looks like we have we have an ask for civil for one part. Would that be part of the of this ask then? Or would this be like a trickle down item? That's kind of what I would hope. It, it would be. Yeah. Especially since we've raised the volume from 20 to 25, I would take that out. I think I I think Dan would be amenable to that. Seven? No, I'm sorry. 20. Do a line, yeah. What What's the downside of doing ten this year? Uh, the risk is, is that the radios that don't get replaced completely take a nosedive, and, and we and we're forced to either replace them at the time, unbudgeted, uh, or I don't know. Call them I, I radio can guy. comment that <laughs> a little bit more, commissioners. If um, the the radios the sheriff's office currently has in portables is end of life. There is no depot repair. If they get damaged in any way, you, you have to buy a replacement. Um, there's there's no repair of them by Motorola anymore. Uh, <coughs> as well as uh, those older radios don't have any of the features of like this radio GPS project that we're doing. Don't get to take advantage of it. These newer ones do. So that's a you know another. Uh, benefit of replacing So if these crap out, how fast can we get? How fast can we replace them? Uh, if if a radio dies, I mean, you can order one the next day and it'll be here within two weeks. Um, of course, that's if, if you'd like to do it that way. However, then you're down to two to three weeks without a radio. Hopefully there's spares. However, we have I don't know how many uh, Lieutenant Miller keeps on spares, but they're also still all the old, same old ones and can die as well at, you know, almost, they're 15 years old, I believe, which is pretty extensive for it. So what, I, what I'm thinking is, to Leslie's point, let's say we even drop down to 12, you deploy 10 and keep two a spare. At least it's a little bit of a savings. Can the older ones that we have be rotated in to replace the new ones that die? So that is uh, what... Until we get a replacement. There. Correct. The, the idea is these are replacing patrol, um, which gets that benefit of the new features and stuff to replace the old radios. The old radios, as long as they are still operable, do have use and are getting being filtered into the jail when the jail has a new hire. They're Because the jail deputies don't really don't need the, the extra features or a brand new radio so they are reused until they are completely unusable so those old radios are not uh, just thrown away or, or unused and they are held on as spare so if one does die you do have a radio however you, so yes it, they do get reused is that the cheapest we can get them for that that is the cheapest we can get them for that is uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the NASPO 
value point contract purchasing. It's a statewide contract that we take part of. It is part of that contract. Um, sometimes we can negotiate it at time of purchase. That a little bit Motorola can will sometimes throw in an extra two to three percent off uh, if with a large purchase. So we we do get a little bit of that, but as a budget ask, that's the number you have to go with. So you want to drop drop it to twelve? That's fine. Okay, down to twelve. Commissioners, uh, again, ask for the record. We can live with that. We would just ask that in that we didn't get the 20 this year. It will be the same board next year. Maybe we can come back and ask for the other eight. That's yeah. correct. You can always ask, Dan. Yep, that's correct. <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Key word there is ask. <laughs> Surviving here. Yeah, let, let's go until it, we'll go 14 more minutes to 2:50, and then we'll break for 10. How's that? Sounds good. Okay. So, okay. do so we have anything further here, Dina? I had a note in here for the uh, unmarked detected vehicles, and there was a note from our last visit with the sheriff to reduce to two. So, has there been any conversations about modifying this number? We won't trickle that down. Okay, I so think the board has been fair with us that the 25 will make it work. So zero? Zero. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Zero. And that would be for the, was there? Two. Unmarked detective. Two. Makes a big difference. Oh, yeah. Yes, it does. Big difference. Thank you. Talk to me about these transit vans. Transit vans. We we transport inmates to other counties, meet other counties, uh, we've got three different courtrooms. We go to uh, two of our fleet have 135,000 miles roughly right now, probably going to be pushing 150. Uh, I'm transporting a group of 10, 12 inmates. We need something reliable. Sure. And to, to but but you miles. know brand new vans are not necessarily reliable, right? I'm hoping they're better than those. <laughs> I, I agree. I so that's agree. where we been asking for more than that and we're, we're down to really just two of them right now that have the, the high mileage and really like two uh, if we could get one this year and one next year that that may be a compromise where we, we just keep that one only for real short distance trips I, I'd be happy cutting that in half right now yep especially this year I mean it's just like what we did last year and yep. after we'll just need one You took it to one, right? Get it? Could I be the first one to be scanned? <laughs> <laughs> we'd, we'd have to celebrate this. If I get your vote, you'll, you'll be the first one in the door. <laughs> I hope not because I've been arrested. But <laughs> you know, the drugs are getting snuck into the jail. I'm not going to explain how, but yes. they do. I'm, I'm willing to let that go for now. Just, you know, Dina, if you could just flag that like asterisks for later just if we get sure. that tight but right. I'm I see the value in it um, it's just do inmates have a choice do they be like no I can't I be scanned <laughs> do you just te tell them they're gonna be scanned or in Yakima County had a huge drug problem they got that they required everyone to do it so the drug problem's gone can you tell what people had for lunch? <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> hope not. <laughs> yeah. I'm just asking, if you're talking about body cavities, I mean... Yeah, well, you're right. I mean, that's, well, what happened? I'm sure. You realize if 
if they get this, you're going to be featured on the front page of the press. First commissioner to approve body scan. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm Actually, not there yet. Actually, it's probably a good thing. I'm, I'm not yeah. there yet. Okay. I'm just saying that I would never want that job of, of finding things. So. <laughs> well, without the scanner, don't you have to do it manually? Yeah, that, that, yeah. Is, that is worse. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's all I'm saying. Not that I would ever, you know, take that job, but yeah. Um, okay, so talk to me about the... Uh, when we do the green things, does that oh, reduce our 9.9 .9 million when we put those? Uh, Are they restricted? Yes. Yeah. The restricted fund balance sources. Let's see. So on, on your card, yeah. you have yes. all the restricted balances. Yes. It yes. is part of our overall fund balance, but these are restricted that can only be used for certain things. But our 9.9 .9 right. it will reduce it. Yeah. it. It does not reduce your assigned fund balance. No. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But, but it, re it reduces the tax. That nine million, yes. Yes, yes. yes. Well, <laughs> sorry. Right. Yes. No, no worries. <laughs> worries. All right, so that's yes. good. All right, All right. So, well, let's, yeah. let's take a peek at these green things. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, this might be uh, Captain Street. Is there going to be money left in that account for two FTEs funded at 30%? Yes. Okay, yeah, that's, so uh, even, even if we approve all this, there's going to be enough money. My understanding is that uh, that position previously held by Bob Yellen has been basically locked in and, and has been there just kind of floating and there's been a few follow-ups regarding what we're going to do with that position. Mm -hmm. okay. So the, the vessel account usually is pretty robust and sustains quite well. And that's only 50% of it, right? So it's 30. No, but yeah. I mean, so I can I can add a little color okay. to that if you'd like. Yes. So we looked at that position, and because um, the proposal is to use it 70% uh, school resource and 30% vessel, I looked at that position that's to be retired, and it was actually 100% funded by patrol dollars. So you would actually save 100% of that position in tax dollars and place 30% of it into the vessel fund that's restricted and then the school would pay the rest. Okay. So it would be a big savings to tax, uh, tax dollars. Okay, so I just, what I meant by 50% was the fees are actually 50% parks and waterways, 50% rec safety, is that right? Correct, I don't yes. believe that that, the fund balance that Dina was referring is to is the, is, the, part. is the sheriff's It's just side. the yeah. sheriff's fees, yeah. yes. Okay. okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, if I'm okay with uh, that for right now, as long as there is money for that, those two 30% funded FTEs. Okay. What's the second one? I, I want to. Oh. <laughs> so, if we can get a commitment from the school district to fund 70%, I'd like to see two full-time Marine deputies out there. Is that... With the one seventy percent from the school district, or mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Let, let's start from the beginning. How many do you have right now today? This this summer, right now, how many marine deputies are funded out of this account? Um, boy, I think just Ryan. I think just Will and Justin. Will and Justin. Are at the uh, Will place. Justin and Melton. And Melton. Three. The other three are full-time employees, full-time deputies here, temporarily okay. assigned over there. Right, right, three full-times temporarily assigned over there. So right. you can share patrol plus rec safety for their salaries, is that? No, they're full-time patrol guys waiting to go to the academy. So oh. they not, they're not certified, they're waiting to get into the academy in the fall. We hire them, they're assigned in, into the Marine Division, they're gonna work the summer in Marine, and then in August they'll go to the academy and then start the training program. For Oh, so you will not have them next year is what you're saying. No. You will need new bodies. Yes. Okay, so so let's take the actual people out of it and tell me positions. How many seasonal marine deputies do we fund out of this account? Ten. Ten, okay. Ten seasonal and two, two full-time. Okay, right. so then ten seasonal plus two full-time, and we still would have enough room for 30% of two more full-time. Uh. Yeah, I, I, would, I, I think you so. Know, I haven't looked can, at the numbers Can you do that, that for me? But can you do that for me? Like yeah, where to basically... Let's, yeah, let's flag it. 
have two of those proposed positions? Yes. Okay. Yep. Is there any help in that decision making process about those marine deputies? It's been sketchy the last couple of years about filling those positions. So, right. you know, and I don't want to speak out of turn. You, you should come back to it with the right information, but, but I believe we're pretty safe here. Okay. Right, but uh, my hope is next year that we'd be able to fund those. I mean, not fund them, fill them. So that's what's going on every year. year. I know, I know. So. Uh, All right. All right. So there's four items here under rec safety. Did you want to discuss these asks before approving them? Do you have any questions on any of these asks? Um, tell me about the boathouse plans because aren't we building something right now? Ryan Higgins for the record. So what we're building right now is a storage facility on land next to the marine building that will store the boats for off season in the winter time where they, they are not on the water and get basically grounded at our current boathouse. Um, the boathouse that we want to replace is the one at, at Black Island. And uh, per Sean Riley, we were, he requested that we put some money in the account to do an architectural design because it will be a couple year process okay. for grants and stuff. We're going we're gonna to try to fund it through a grant process. Okay. And, and so it's architectural design to replace the current boathouse at Black Wild, which hopefully will be in conjunction with their remodel project. Okay. And so we're thinking it's about $100,000 then? Oh, yeah, at least. Yeah. Probably closer, probably more than that. But at least that's a starting point for some, some design. So we just took $1.9 million out, didn't we? Yeah, we've, we've uh, cut things down quite a bit. Okay. Only eight to go. <laughs> Only eight to go. Hmm. All out of the sheriff's budget, right? Well, no. 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 no I, don't so. I don't think there's that much room. Yeah. Now. No. No. There's a big no. Okay. So, so, uh, tough book tablets, watercraft, uh, jet ski, personal watercraft. No, the personal. Yeah. What is that? Is that a two-person jet ski? So right now we have a. We have three jet skis on our, on our fleet. We usually have four. We totaled one last year because it got rolled and got water in the engine. We uh, tried to have the mechanic work on it and the engine shot. And to replace the engine, it's cheaper to buy new jet skis, so that's what we do. Okay. We did get some insurance money to help cover some costs on this, but uh, uh, this is to replace it so we have a full set of four. By jet ski, do you mean? A pers uh, riding personal water. Right, right, so not that brand. No. It's, okay. It'll probably be a, a Skidoo or something like that. Okay, and are they two or three seaters? Uh, they're actually three seaters. So that's what the, we get the oh, bigger okay. ones so they okay. can transport personnel. Okay. So we'll Let's leave it. Yep. I have some stationary air supply. That sounds kind of important. Yeah, it's not that much. I'd leave it. Yeah. How are you doing it now? We go to the fire station and hopefully they're there. We can fill tanks. We load all the tanks in the back of the pickup and one guy sits there for about four hours. And fills up tanks. With this system at the office, we'll be able to do it. Each diver will be able to come in and fill their own tanks. And there'll be some consistency across the board, because sometimes we leave them with the fire department, and they get filled to various uh, air, air level levels. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ongoing cost? Uh, just the maintenance of the tanks, the fill the tanks. And I would imagine uh, that can be all covered by the vessel account. Uh, could, could those, just to throw in, be shared by the jail for filling the Tanks there too, the CBDs? Well, yeah, we just got to make sure that the connections are right, but right. it should be okay. Cool. Okay. So I think that wraps this up. Is that fair? And it's almost 2 50. Let's take a 10 minute break, be back at 3. How's that? Okay. Thank you. I apologize for the interruption.
is almost 3.01 p.m. We are resuming our meeting. And we were on new programs. Once again, plenty of water up front. Help yourselves. Cap. Oh, we're we on capital. Oh, we were on, we were on capital. I'm sorry. I'm back on. Okay, thanks. It's too hot. Yeah, can we talk about the F-350 and the Ford Expedition? What are those for? Um, Ford Expedition is, I think, I think we covered the F. No, we didn't. Okay, that's yours. Yeah. So the, the expeditions for longer distance transports, like the Orofino, uh, for, uh, the one we use right now has got 175,000 miles on it. Um, I believe with those 25 cars, was that one that we were possibly going to negotiate? So let, let me just speak in, in general terms about the jail transport stuff, and I appreciate the one band. But I see that there's a big need to, to stay focused on any of those vehicles that take prisoners to, to places. And, you know, the worst case scenario is if they're traveling out of town going to Orofino or going somewhere that breaks down, which that has happened, hasn't it? I mean, it opens up all kinds of headaches, okay? And uh, do I think we can get by with the one van? I do. But I also uh, believe that, uh, you know, shoring that up with a good fleet that's got low miles to take those trips. And sometimes some of those trips involve them not taking the van, but just an expedition or a smaller car. So to the extent that we would be able to triple that down, I don't think if we're going with the police interceptors, that's probably not the best thing to be transporting prisoners in. Right. And especially if maybe you only have two. So I'm just saying that the expedition does have merit in this um, with, with that scenario. Does sure. that make sense to you, John? Yep. It does. That one gets a lot of use. <coughs> it does. All right. And the 4x4? The uh, pickup truck? Yes. Ryan? Yeah, so uh, the pickup truck is uh, currently would be re to replace a uh, truck that's being utilized by Search and Rescue. Search and Rescue is basically a volunteer organization. They have hand-me-down pickups, and the pickup that they're using right now to tow their command post has got 200,000 miles on it. It's a 1990. Um, so they were requesting a new pickup uh, to tow the new command post that they're, at, they're currently having built that they paid for out of their donation fund uh, account. And so uh, I I did some search online through the state bid for vehicles. The Ford F-350 uh, full one ton is what they're requesting. It's the cheapest one out of all of the makes, GMC Chevy. This is a broke down, no frills pickup truck, uh, crew cab that can also personnel. And it'll put a fuel tank in the back and tow that command post. That's what it's for. Can we release these? Uh, that is a possibility that I did not and look at that, I just went on the state bid to get a price for the budget request. Mm -hmm. You okay with that? Consider um, Lisa? Yeah, well, I just have other questions. If it is just for search and rescue, are there any other funds available? Grants, anything? Yeah, we looked at, you know, we, we looked at Title III funds. Uh, we've looked at grants. Um, and uh, we can we can explore op options with a, maybe an OHV grant, but I think that would be, um, they're, they're not big on funding vehicles, they sure. ATVs and, and motorcycles and stuff like that. Uh, Title III, there's just no funds released in Title III, not enough to cover this cost. Okay. All right, uh, let's see where we're at. I, I, we we're here, we might as well hit every line. Um, expandable weapons rack, what is that? Besides what it says. Lieutenant McFarland, you want to speak to that please? Yeah, currently right now, when evidence receives weapons, a lot of times because we don't have racks, what they wind up having to do is lay them on shelves. What can happen is if we have to return those weapons to somebody and they come back and they say, oh, they're scratched, I mean, there's no way for us to, to properly keep them in an upright position so they're separated. And it does cost some evidence. It also, the expandable racks would also make it easier to see what what's in evidence and retrieve it faster. How many weapons does that uh, accommodate? Uh, that one, I don't know. Okay. About, about. Oh, it, well, it, 
it has because it's expandable. It has the ability yeah. to um, hold a lot when we find a feature. Um, and also, with the way that they're currently staffed, the way uh, things exist is that they're just you know, basically in piles, and so that's the uh, issue with damage. Um, the one that we are looking at has a couple of different capacities, um, but it looks like and this one is 10 8 capacity handgun areas, uh, 5 12 capacity stock shell, I don't know, 12 capacity stock what, 120 1 capacity stock saddles, it says, uh, 121 capacity barrel saddles for 5 and a half inches inverted. So it isn't really. I think it's really 240 pistols with magazine storage and 104 revolvers. Um, and what do you primarily take into evidence? Are they uh, long guns or pistols? It's a mixture of both. Well, sure, it's a mixture, yeah. but I mean 50 50, oh, 80 20. I haven't looked at trying to figure out establishing a number. I know it's they looked at this based on the need that they have um, as far as what kind of rack that okay. would suit them best. I'm just Thoughts on somebody might have. Isn't this reconfigurable? I yeah, like yeah, it's it's not like it, yeah. Yes. Yeah. How many, approximately, how many guns do you have on hand now? Hundreds, thousands? No, no. probably not thousands. Yeah. Hundreds. <laughs> hundreds. There are hundreds. hundreds. The, and then the right, the long arms are 120 long, long arms and 80 more uh, pistol with magazine storage on the on one okay. unit. That's all I have to that. Are we okay for now with the capital? Well, we got to we have to address some things up top too. Okay. Um, Did you want to hit every line? Is that it? Well, we're here. We're here. We're here. Um, everybody's in the room can answer questions for each individual. Yeah. All right. I have a quick question. So the 1.9 million reduction is that based purely on capital, or does that also include new programs? This is just for this capital sheet, and I have not worked this into the reduction yet because this is not a number. Okay, fair enough. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. I was just curious. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, detectives, mobile map, or GPS device? Yes. Uh, this, the one that we have that exists, this would replace, and the one that we currently have is over 10 years old. It's broken. It's no longer serviceable. We can't replace what is broken on it. Um, so this is a replacement uh, model, and what it will give us the ability to do is more accurately uh, measure crime scenes you know, that are out the field, and, uh, even in sight. But uh, I, I'm fine with it unless you guys need more. Plus, the GPS accuracy is much more developed over mm here. -hmm. Sure. <laughs> okay, replace security cameras. Mm -hmm. Is that for facilities? So that would be Kevin Smart for the record. That is for the 911 center's camera system. This would be our third year requesting that item on the agenda. The camera system that we currently have is outdated. Um, it's frequently breaking at the front gate. We have IT, we have building the grounds down there. Uh, we've been able to piecemeal it together with some cheap versions, but again, it's just a security feature for them down there to be able to see any breaches in the perimeter and that kind of item there. So again, a third request, it's, I'll let maybe Colin can speak to a little bit more on that, but it's, it's just becoming an antiquated piece of equipment down there that we need to re, reconfigure and get up to the times of what's needed. Uh, Colin McCroy, to make a point, the system is running on Windows XP, which is supposed to be replaced and off our network. And it's at this still point. running. Uh, <laughs> Grant worked some magic when the last time it crashed right. to make it continue working. So uh, it is old. If it fails at any point, there's a 50 50 shot if it'll be working again. And, and this isn't uh, eligible for. It isn't in the sense that it's uh, a brick and mortar building, non uh, communications infrastructure. Uh, legal has reviewed it a couple times and it doesn't meet muster for E911. So it's on us. I'm, I'm okay. fine for now. Okay. Uh, replace the roof. All right. Might as well talk about that. 
Can you have a for the record, unless the other sheriff wants to spearhead this? Well, yeah, I just, I don't know why that's in our budget. And we talked about this earlier, but why isn't that in Sean Riley's budget? You know, it's, it's, he's uh, the guy with the, the 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 security camera? No, 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 no I've got a roof. Oh, the roof. I thought you were back in the city. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Flanted. That's a good question. Alright, so I've highlighted in yellow these two because they're interrelated. So if you were to approve the remodel reconfiguration, then this would be covered with restricted funds and this would be covered with tax funds. Mm -hmm. So if, if we <coughs> keep one, we keep both. If we cut one, we cut both. So okay. what's your pleasure? So Colin, yes. um, talk to me about the, the remodel. I mean, how are we talking this year, next year, or sometime in the next five years? How so this project is to, um, Currently, we have nine dispatch positions on the main floor. Uh, we are at the call volume that we need to staff more dispatchers in there at one time. Um, and this project is to um, get three more additional positions. Uh, we're actually currently in the process of knocking down one wall with this year funded uh, projects. Um, this is to purchase additional co console furniture and reconfigure the how the consoles are laid out so we can fit those three more. Um, that'll give us a total of 14 positions at the center. Uh, this was the best, most cost-effective way to get additional positions without needing to actually expand the building. Um, so the, the ops, the 911 ops budget side is 50-50 uh, split of just the console furniture. Everything else is in the um, with the project, I will ju would just like to note the other, um, the radio console position uh, addition requests. That's the console position to field those with the radio. That's the radio console position. So it is tied. It is independent, though. If you choose to cut those other ones, that one can also be removed, as there would be no point. Um, and the other two. Um, Capital projects: the 911 phone replacement and computer aided, computer aided dispatch system replacement. Those projects have built into them the additional equipment for those new okay. built in in that cost estimate request. So if you ch if you chose not to, we would still like to do those projects, but they would be at a reduced yes. level as it would be uh, the uh, for the positions that we have now, not the expanded capacity. Good. So we're going to leave it for now. like we've touched on everything are we are we good with keeping the tough book tablets for vessel yeah are those yeah. replacements yeah. additions they're brand new they'll be new additions to them okay and you just need one per pair yeah we have two things. now and we're going to add two more or four more to the fleet to because the total six for all our yeah yeah that's yeah. i mean it's restricted so it's it kind of yeah. doesn't help the big picture Okay, so new programs. So our next big cost driver is personnel. So I'm going to scooch over to there. So at the top, we have new positions. And underneath this line here, we have um, changes, overtime, special duty pay, that kind of stuff. So these are the new position asks for each respective department. questions about the current needs for these positions. We can make notes. I have a note in here for the administrative assistant for detectives here from last time. Here are the total uh, loaded amounts for each of these positions and asks from an okay. impact perspective. So before we go any further, 
Uh, the study that that HR is working on is that refresh my memory. Is that strictly non-sworn, or are I we doing everything? Sworn is also being sworn. Sworn is separate. separate. Yeah. Excuse me. I think they're separate. Um, cities and counties they're separate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Commissioner, just just for the record, at this stage, we were talking about personnel and a budget cost, correct? It's right on the record that our number one priority in the bar none is pay across the board. Uh, you know, with special emphasis on the sworn deputies, and, and I don't mean to say that they're any more important than anybody else, uh, but I am saying that they're the ones that cost the most to replace and the ones that, 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 that provide public safety. So, you know, I, I don't want to get into putting the civilians below the sworn, but no, it's a matter of business. So, but the bottom line is, is that, that when, I, when I say sworn, I mean the detention deputies and the Yes, deputies. yes, yes. Uh, but pay is our number one item. Okay, and and I think I think you're going to get some agreement on that. Um, Thank you. The question that I have though is, do we address this now, or do we wait for on HR? Well, well there's any positions here that you want background information on if there's any questions that you have you have your full staff here to answer those questions of the need give some background information so we're looking at new bodies not pay right now. yeah so these are just new people in general this first top part okay. and then this would be right. increases to overtime increases to holiday buyback so the the impact would be different once we apply the, the wage study but these are personnel costs that would increase just based on either adding a new person or adding adding more funding for a particular item like overtime so you would just after the wage study these numbers would like increase start at the top. Personnel technician. So um, we did an exercise earlier today. I'm, I'm going to help this along a little bit. I did an exercise with our staff about our number one choices across the board. And maybe we could help move along a little quicker if I just told you up front what those were. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So going in the patrol division, the number one choice was the, uh, and, and again, this is kind of related to pay, but it's there. It's you know, the special duty pay and the patrol division. That was their number one priority, was that special duty pay. And so I can go through the list or we can hit them one at a time. You tell me how you want to do it. Why don't you go through the list? Okay, so. Because we have a lot to cover. So so. Number one was the, on the patrol division was the special duty pay. Jail custody division, the number one was the holiday buyback. Again, another pay relief. In the jail services division, the number one choice was the Lawrence Court. I'm looking at my picture here. Okay, in the um, support services division, the uh, Captain Smart's division, uh, the, the, the number one of choice there was a record specialist. <clears throat> and moving on down in the detective division, the number one choice was a background deputy. That, that's a sworn deputy sheriff position. So it's detective considered background investigator? Yes, but it's basically what it equates to as a deputy sheriff's position. So that, that was the number one choice. Uh, as far as personnel goes, did I miss anybody? Well, uh, and then the, uh, at 911, uh, uh, this is unrelated to the enhanced dollar, right. but the 911 personnel, uh, their number one choice was the holiday buyback as well. Looks like that's all they have. Oh, I forgot the admin, yes. Uh, and then in the admin, the sheriff's admin section, thank you, Kim, the, the number one choice there was a personnel technician. It's a part-time position. Uh, part-time, yeah, thank you. So that, that's, we, we sat down and went right, one, two, three choices, but if you want to kind of cut to the case, that's how we saw it when we sat down amongst all our staff today. So if we identify the highlighted as your top priority, 
Can we eliminate the rest? Well, I'd like to say no. <laughs> but I'd like to say yes. Um, you know, I would have to, I don't want to make a decision in a vacuum, you know, without taking a look at what's left over. But I would say to you that the, the uh, those items that we've highlighted are what we view as the critical ones. Now, some of those other ones, again, I would have to go through the list. I would say some of them probably we can get rid of. But I don't want to start picking and choosing if I don't have and then put them our staff. Okay, so we have another oh, session tomorrow? Yes. So okay, we can do fair that. Enough. Yeah, Dina? Yes. Can you show that if we did what the under sheriff suggested and just did yeah. it like that? And did what uh, Chris suggested, take take out everything else? Okay, I can do that calculation and bring it back tomorrow. I would just be interested in what the savings are. She'll do it for tomorrow. Yeah, I can update that scenario for tomorrow. I, I, really like, I really like the cooperative. Get these things done. Right. Okay. So, so just so I understand on this, we'll, the folks that I work with, that I will go back to the board and we'll go through what's not highlighted there, and then we'll come back and talk about it again. Sure. Fair enough. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, Dean, is there a way for me to get a copy of that? So, because my printing's so small, I don't want to go and highlight all my stuff here. I can send this to you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Post this on the whole drive. Yeah, set, yeah, set, yeah, center. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the jail overtime line is really high. Is this something that it's not highlighted as a priority, but um, is this something that you would you would want to reduce and partially keep? Mm -hmm. well, that's John Holacek for the record. I've, we've we've gotten two hundred fifteen thousand every year for the last quite a few years and what I did is I just took the three year average. If our staffing <coughs> continues the way it is right now, we're to say we're looking pretty good right now. I can certainly see that being less. It's, it's just all I've got to go on is what the past has shown so we're on pace to spend more than that this year. But with the expansion and all the training with the front row Really heavy. So, John, you've been averaging 215. That's, That's what I've been given. We've been averaging about 600. Oh. 215. Every year we ask for our three-year average anywhere. It's been anywhere between three to 500,000. And every year we get 215 with the thought process. Well, if you're short on staff, you have salary salary that's going to cover that. And for the most part, that's been pretty accurate. Um, but what I did is I just I took the numbers I had and the three year average I could get for everything else, and that's where that 605,000 comes from. Okay. Are you 100% up to staff? Oh, we're down one body right now, although we have still quite a few. Well, we've got five in training still, and then one open. So we're so 2020 in much better is shape looking than, pretty a lot better good. shape than we've been in. So, so, so Commissioner, one thing that we that I feel obligated to, to point out is that, and, and this is, this, this is going to need some greater explanation from Captain Holacek, but you know, some of that overtime before was predicated on a jail that didn't have as many beds. Precisely. And I know if it, if it didn't come up now, it's going to come up later. And so, uh, in honesty, you know, I just, John, can you sort of relate how that relationship is now that the jail is to that overtime? But now that the jail is staffed the way it is and we've got that many beds and we're not doing as many out of county transports, how does that relate to the overtime costs that we're asking for? Well, it, I mean, it's on two fronts. One, our population since we opened the expansion has been within the range of our capacity. It's amazing because we've been higher than that before. So out of county transports take up a lot of overtime. It's too deaf to be driving a long ways, eight hour days. So if our population stays low, that part's eliminated and we just keep our inmates in the jail. So that keeps it down. And then the other side, we had 15 deputies we needed to hire for the expansion. It opened October 1st and we still had roughly 20 that were either needed to be trained and or hired. So that's what's created a lot of overtime. Yeah. So, population stays where it's at and we're able to maintain our staffing to where we're
close to full, realistically, somewhere in that two, three hundred thousand dollar range, I'm guessing should be should be sufficient. I mean, of course, there's variables in there that can come up, hospital right. guard duty, other things that are difficult to predict. But no. Cut based, or? based on where we sit right now, mm -hmm. the three-year average, I would predict would be high if things continue to go well. Sure. What do you, what do you suggest? What do you want to cut to? Let's be optimistic. Sure, sure. So take it to is that three eighty-seven? That's unloaded. Four seventy-nine yeah. loaded. Okay. So we mm -hmm. would. 250 unloaded. Yeah, so if we, to we change the number, we would change this yeah, number. Yeah, let's go to 250. Yeah, that, that can be revisited. Yeah. There we say. I'll update the loaded figure. Okay. Dan's going to come back to us tomorrow with your most We'll, we'll meet again tomorrow. And Dana, if you could send us the color copy. Sure. And then we'll meet tomorrow and then we'll come back and we'll talk about what we can and can't really work. Got it. I'll okay. just send you the whole workbook. Okay. And I'll put the scenarios in and just clearly mark it. I'll just send it to everybody. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. All right. So then the only other thing we have today is operating expenses. And I will say to one of the noticeable things was the jail overcrowding has taken a precipitous drop because of the jail expansion. So you should feel really good about that. The operating expense budget has been cut yep. significantly in this year's ask. So okay. the yellow indicates some modest increases, and um, the red is cuts. So um, we do have detail for travel. If that's something you wanted to look at, we'll see some are pretty small. If you had any questions about operating costs in some of the larger areas, yeah, that's the jail right. ops maybe maybe what was driving the increase for the jail ops and some of these larger ones. Um, what about Sheriff? Let, uh, are you at the top there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sheriff Admin. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Sheriff mm -hmm. Admin, yeah. So let's go there. Probably that one of the biggest causes for that increase, Commissioner, is the uh, uh, vote for the cell phones that we talked about in the yes. last meeting. I think that was brought in a ring of them, just over 50,000. Yeah. And we did adjust our figures in the system to capture the savings in the other areas by implementing this new program. Okay. Right. So according to the, uh, the email, the May 14th thing, it looks like that this year, uh, we if we approved all of the cell phones, that we can take 27,000 171 out. Um, then it says that the cost would revert back to the original 52. So why would it be 52,000 this year and next year? It's it's 27,000. If it's approved this year, it would be 27,171 of obligated funds, and that reflects the the deletion of Correct. of these items that are listed from the other line items. Right now. The, in general, the entire service costs 52488 annually. So free phones, essentially. Yes. And uh, so this year, it's it's the number is reduced because of those other savings. But if it's, to, if it's approved next year, you should anticipate it being 52488 So uh, how do you feel about 
pool fund. 10 to 15 officers, if they're concerned about Sharing. using their own phone. I'll speak to that, mm -hmm. because that was part of our exercise earlier. Um, but there's a couple of parts to this. The first part is that, that $27,000 that we saved, or, or rather the $27,000 first year cost, it goes up to 52 and change the next year. If, if we don't do it that way, you know, when we're getting everybody phones, then we're going to be putting close to $13,000 back in asks in the detective budget, $4,300 back in the... But that hasn't been taken out yet. Yeah, well, those, I guess, yeah. it's, it's... Yes, it's, actually, that that money will be, you have. Yeah, that's yeah. all been adjusted. That's all reflected. Yeah. What, what I'm saying is if, if you say no to the ultimately the $52,000 a year expense, then those expenses that were taken out will go back in. Right. So, and my, at least some of that has to do with cell phones. There's some one-time money, I think, for a camera or something we deducted. All right. So, what, what I did when I was talking with the staff is I said, well, I, I, I suspect they're going to ask us about pool phones. And uh, we, we talked about what would be reasonable to make it work. Bearing in mind that you've got one shift out, you got to have some in a charger, somebody's going to get stuck over time working some arrest late, we got to supply detectives, um, and there's other areas, but we, we got that down to 35 phones. We got it down from 100 to 35. And that, that cost on that for those 35 phones was at 18370 so uh, 18,370 annually. Okay, but that would still then adding back the 27,000 back in. That's just the pure cost of the phones. Now, there would probably be some reductions from the admin budget relative to what, what we're already paying, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but the cost of those 35 phones, what is it now? 500 and 540 bucks a year a phone or something? Yeah, it's like, I thought it was like five, yeah, 524 per phone per year. Uh, so that's just for the, the cost of 35 plated? phones. Mm -hmm. Why so high? No, it's like 35, uh, I thought it was, uh, yeah, I see your rationale because it doesn't add up, but it's, I think it's like 30, 39, 35 or 39 dollars a month per phone. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a, Let's do quick math. That's forty. Four hundred eighty million dollars. And then there's a maintenance cost in there because you would buy. Uh, we wanted to uh, buy a maintenance maintenance software where we can control what it, what is on the phone. So if someone's checking out a phone, they can't. If we want to limit it so they can't have Facebook on the phone or or you know whatever, pick a game, you sure. know whatever video game you want to put on there, so we can restrict what what the content is and manage the phones themselves. So, commissioners, with that plan, which is not ideal, and it wouldn't be our choice, but understanding that there's probably some give and take, you know, this, that, that reduces the cost that we originally request, the annual cost, almost to just one third of the original cost. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we can make that work. It's not ideal, um, but we can make that work. But, but the only other thing that I want to make sure to add about the, to this is, First of all, Idaho State Police, if I'm not mistaken, for sure, Coeur d'Alene City and Spokane City, they're issuing all of their people phones. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they just get them up front. So it's kind of the industry standard that, that mm -hmm. police officers aren't using their personal phones to do uh, business on. Uh, and I don't think, you know, just on its face, it's not fair to ask guys to use their personal phones mm -hmm. for, for doing work. You know, how, how many patrol deputies will be against carrying two phones? How many will be against? Yeah, using? 20, 25 percent. I mean, is there? I mean, there's got to be a. Well, and, and we we covered that ground because again, I'm, um, I think some by by taking a look at human nature, just bottom line, there's going to be people say they help act with it. I don't want to carry two phones. I'll just take the risk of carrying my own. Mm -hmm. But you know, this wasn't my idea. But it was Tim's idea. It was. We're just going to make policy that when you're working, you're using that. Yeah, I, I, and I think if you're going to use your personal phone while out on patrol, there's going to be some serious liability. Yep. Uh, I don't have a problem with your request here. I really think that 
uh, to protect our deputies and to protect the county, they're going to need their own phone. Uh, excuse me, I keep saying company, county phones. Yeah. Well, we have had a situation with an officer involved shooting in Shoshone County where ISP did go in and collect not only the, the department issued phones, but the personal phones that were on scene, and they kept them for a matter of weeks. So, I, I mean, it, for and most of us, it would be difficult to go without your personal phone, which is like your, your livelihood anymore. Actually, um, you can just get a, a burner phone, have your number transferred or something. I mean, there's kind of ways around that, but. Um, That's the thing. It's, it hasn't happened. I don't know that it's happened here. I can take your word that there was a mess in Shoshone. But if you had a, a contingency fund where they grab the under sheriff's phone, and we say, here, Dan, go buy a new one, like that. And that's, I that's, can't a, argue with that. that's the somebody's phone, we're going to go buy a new one. It's a heck of a lot cheaper than this right now. I can't argue that. But the thing that I can argue is that I don't think it's right to ask deputy sheriffs to use their own phone. No, I agree with I that. do think that they should be provided a phone. And again, if, you know, if we make policy that says you're going to do work, you're going to take your, your phone. Sure. And then if they decide to do it otherwise, well, then we'll deal with that. Sure. But we can, I'm, you know, I'm fine right now. I Thank just you. want to get all the, the details. Yep. Plan to leave the whole amount in at this point? Yes, at this point. I would say leave it yeah. to I'm going to say leave it to. Thank you. <laughs> Relative to the bank phone, so there may be needs to adjust that number. That number could get reduced, I think, if we see where some other areas that were paying for phones in the budget, you know, covered like this. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, Yeah, let's take a look at that. shooting or a malfunction or whatever. Those guns are in various states of, uh, uh, of equipment status. And what I mean by that is some have a light on them, some have an optic, some have a sling. They just, over the 10 or 12 years they've been there, 
things have been taken off of and replaced um, a broken part or a missing part on a rifle. Um, so uh, $6,800 of that total budget is to replace or to to replace all those missing parts, all the guns on the rack, everything matches in its own line. Uh, targets are about $4,000 for targets and backing. We go through a lot of targets throughout the year. Uh, gun supplies, we just went over, switched over to a Gen 5 uh, uh, block handgun. We had to get part and parts and pieces for that. We didn't have to do it this year, but we're going to have to do it as we start servicing and doing annual inspections on these firearms. Those are 19 Gen 5? Uh, 19s and, uh, and uh, 17s. Why do you buy 17s? Uh, capacity, I think is what it was. As a purpose. Um, so, uh, but, but do we need that level of increase? Well, if you total it all up, that's what it comes to. I, mean, that's, uh, I can go through every single item. I don't have the book in front of you. No, no I actually do have the book in front of you. Lieutenant, does that include the um, 15 detention deputies, the ammo for them for qualifications? Well, and that's the jail. Okay. Commissioners, also that that figure includes seventy three hundred dollars for taser cartridges. Oh, yeah. uh, each year the deputies are required to requalify or you know basically prove that they know how to use the thing, and it requires two cartridge deployments uh, per year. And so outfitting two cartridges, two two taser cartridges per deputy uh, runs about seventy three hundred dollars. So you guys have a better feel for guns than I do. Yeah. Now, are you replacing guns this year? Not in this budget. No. Okay. Not not in this line item. There are okay. some guns requested. In this line budget, item. are we replacing guns? Yeah. So there is a there is a request to and not replace. Well, yeah, there is a request to replace replace start replacing guns. Yes. How many? Um, so we requested. Um, let me get to the right page so I know my numbers. I'm not trying to jump around. No, oh, that's fine. So we requested 15 new pro rifles uh, to start replacing our current rifles that are over 10 years old. Uh, These are AR type? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we requested eight shotguns to replace some shotguns that were purchased in the 1970s. I think he's got one. Um, so, uh, and, then we, and then we want to purchase 15 more handguns to start rotating those handguns out. Block work, all right, the block recommends they won't put a solid date on it or a solid number of rounds to go through it for liability purposes. But they recommend every five to seven years to rotate uh, or replace their handguns. Uh, I'm sure there's probably some reasons behind that. I it's it's called black sales department. Yeah. 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 But but that's their recommendation, and so and, and to, those, those babies are good for what, 125,000 rounds. Potentially, I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah. yes, so, they are. So, commissioners, I'd, I'd like to speak not to the guns, but to the ammo. When we started with the ammo, you know, we learned the lesson, or at least I did, in 2012 when Sandy Hook happened. I don't know if those of you that, that are familiar with guns, yes. ammo flew off the shelves, the guns flew off the shelves, and uh, we, we, as a department, had a heck of a hard time getting ammo. Mm. And one thing that, that I want to stress is that I, it, I believe that it's one school shooting or one stroke of somebody's pen no way, yes. with, with an <laughs> almost set up political things. Somebody that, that doesn't like guns somewhere strikes strikes yeah. some law, and people are going to go to, into a panic like they did before. And I'm a big advocate about keeping a lot of ammo in stock for that reason. I, I learned that lesson last time, and I do believe, Ryan, if I'm not mistaken, some of this cost up there is to, to uh, make our ammo Correct. supply more. Yeah, we almost ran out of ammo last year because it wasn't replaced. It was because we had to buy gun supplies and mm -hmm. targets and stuff, so there wasn't enough money. To buy when ammo. you replace guns, let's not talk about the ammo, uh, and you uh, retire the guns, where do they go? We sell them back to whoever we purchased the guns from. So we bought our handguns through Gunorama, they gave us a cost trade. Or the, de or the deputy has the ability to buy them from gun Okay. Actually, Watts got a pretty, don't, don't they have the buyback where they yeah. give you, it's like 150, 160 bucks and you get a new gun, yeah. right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's pretty, good. pretty good deal. Yeah, you give them the other gun back and it's a good deal. Okay, so what are we going to do? Right. Hmm. 
Commissioners, I would uh, like to point out that on yes, line please. 8060, that's, uh, the total request is, is reduced from last year's request by 45000 Yeah, I noticed that. Okay. I'm convinced for now. You want to leave it alone for, for now? <clears throat> Leslie? Yeah, I'll leave it for now. Okay. That, you know, we're gonna, and there's uh, costs associated with personnel, I guess, is overtime, some holiday buyback, that kind of thing is, is what's driving us here. So, <coughs> done a good job with personnel there. So, this so one. And what is that? It's in the, the, the SWAT budget, you know? Yeah, it's a, in the B budget. What, what is it? It's just looking at it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, right. <laughs> UTM simulation bolts, uh, four of those, uh, what is commonly referred to as uh, flashbang transportation boxes, so, uh, those flash diversionary devices. Uh, breaching tools, uh, breaching shotguns, two of those. Uh, explosive transport box, because we established an explosive breaching team last year as part of the SWAT team. So they want to be able to safely transport explosives. A 40 millimeter six shot uh, less lethal launcher, uh, which is $4,200 of, of that total cost. And uh, night vision goggles uh, two uh, to the tune of $6,300 per mile. What, what generation are the goggles? Are the goggles? That's a good question. I don't have that answer. Actually, I might have And, and what kind of uh, shotguns do they use for breaching? I will, I will look at the quotes. And okay. Okay. Why don't we move on in the meantime sure. and come back to that. Uh, let's see, what else do we... Are you looking at 8067, the non-capital equipment? Yes. Okay. E911. That's actually decreased. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. okay. You're right. Looking at the wrong comments. And again, we may have already addressed this in other areas. We're just mm -hmm. trying to be methodical. Because mm -hmm. the more we cover now, the less we have to do later. So. The new program and the vehicles look like that's a lot of driving that. Also, um, my assumption is there's probably contract increases built in for the food service and medical service. That's correct. That's where I mean, 90,000 of it is the food and the medical. Yeah. Considering the size of the operation, 70,000 in OPEX is pretty small. Yeah and you've gone through some serious changes yeah. and expanding your space and all the overhead costs associated with more square footage, this seems pretty pretty low. What about swatching? Yeah, we were just there. Okay. That was the, uh, the SWAT supplies. Oh, that, okay. Uh, yeah. And commissioners, I do have an update that uh, shotgun is a Remington uh, 870 TAC-14 PGO breaching shotgun. Can I get two of those? Um, I have 
we go back to my other. But I think that's what you said. And two. two. And then the MEGs are a uh, TMVC PBS 14 with Paris Pinnacle Black, uh, and then a Noritos Mil Spec Rhino Arm Mount. Can you listen to this? Yeah. <laughs> I actually understand it. I, I'm sure you do. <laughs> and, uh, this is a pretty neat looking arsenal. My son's been a recon ranger for 20 years. Yeah. And he's always going, Dad, look at this. Yeah, I'm not. A anyway, it's go. Greek to me, but it sounds pretty <laughs> it's okay. I wish wild. it were Greek to me. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. You'd understand. <laughs> Thank you. I like to use it for hunting. <laughs> I've got I'm waiting for a howitzer to come up. <laughs> <laughs> So okay. just getting back to the operating expenses for the entire sheriff's division, the net increase overall for the B budget is only 185, which is pretty low considering the size and Everything scope in there. of the operations. I would say operations. for now, yeah, I'd say for now that's acceptable. That's good. Yes, or and not. this is a big reason why is just the the savings in the extradition of the prisoners. Okay. So I just I personally, as as the finance person, it's impressive. To say that on the Thank you. Yeah. So the only other thing I have here is we were just looking at revenue. I pulled in some revenue numbers. It looks like we're seeing some uh, increases in anticipated revenue to help offset costs. Um, in a couple of areas where I'm seeing decreases, it's just the sheer fact that their restricted fund that is forced balanced. So there's not a whole lot of excitement here as far as um, revenue generation. Or things we can do. Or things we can do. Um, we are looking, I will just say, um, we've, we've been working with, uh, with Captain Street on the uh, Hayden City Agreement. And we're doing some preliminary calculations. We will likely have some high level numbers for you tomorrow okay. to look at that to try to offset the cost. We know we can't completely offset the cost of providing those deputies, but we do, we are working through some numbers to try to, to figure out if we can uh, offset the increase of the, the wages cool. year over year. So we'll be working through those and bringing you a summary. It's a, it's a lot of spreadsheets and so we won't, we won't cross your eyes with those at this point. We need okay. to through the numbers. So, at this point in time, it sounds like we have some um, additional information we need to gather. Um, with IT for um, the tech processing fee and the server requirements uh, for the soft code. That's when they had estimated at $50,000. Yes, so we'll get some more information for tomorrow's meeting. Yeah. And um, we'll talk about the Hayden City Agreements. Is, and we'll also work through the personnel scenarios right, yeah. That's and what Dan's gonna share that about. with the group. Okay. And we can talk about that tomorrow. At this point in time, if there's no more cuts that you'd like to make today, I would love to get everybody out of here in one piece and breathing some cooler air. <laughs> so did you have any questions or any other uh, uh, analysis requests you'd like us to come back with tomorrow? Maybe the only thing is um, some soft code uh, feedback as far as all agencies happy with it. It's working out the way it's supposed to because just with the situation with Odyssey, I wouldn't want to bring that on to the Sheriff's Department since it's the same. And this is developer. the one that's being used in Ada County? That's correct. For, so, over, for over a year. I can speak to that pretty much right now and answer okay. the question on that. Uh, Ada County is the one that we have reached out to the most because they're the only one really in Idaho who has implemented it. Mm -hmm. um, Canyon is also looking at it because they're in the same. And the larger agencies are the ones who are burdened by the more processes and paperwork. Smaller agencies, one can't afford that kind of thing, but they don't handle nearly the same workload we do on a daily basis. So. Ada County swears by it. They've had nothing but good things to say about it. Again, we did have one of our civil clerks who went down for a school recently who did go over to Ada County and spent four hours there watching it. Is again fully convinced that it will streamline our processes and save them time. And this is one of our clerks who 
has been up there doing this for 15 years, uh, so I would have to stand by her word that this is this is the help that they need. Sure. I, I guess I'm just concerned and, and uh, just because of Odyssey. I mean, it's going to be this miracle, and it hasn't been, and so that's Truly just Truly, the way it's been presented is there is not the conflict between the programs. It either will enhance or it'll be a stalemate and nothing will change, nothing will change. on the communication process. They will still send us stuff through it. It's a Tyler Technology product, but it will be more e court and we'll communicate with them on this end. Soft code would strictly be for us internally and our processes. So they'll either blend it together to be beneficial, or it will not impact other areas on what we're doing with it. So tell me about Spillman versus soft code. What process or procedures is will soft code take the place of some Spillman? Uh, the biggest one is right now we have a reoccurring problem where Spillman will not uh, computate properly the interest. It keeps compounding interest upon interest upon interest. Softcode's going to help the biggest part of that for us. The other part is just streamlined drop down boxes and menus. Spillman is a lot of click here, enter a bunch of data here, go to the same screen, enter a bunch of more same data because it can't talk back and forth. Softcode just streamlines all of that. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that, that they will help set up in advance where it's pre-designed drop-down boxes where you just click, okay, that's what I want, click, that's what I want. Um, the ability for us to, it, right now, the gals keep files and files of <coughs> all of our processes and stuff in play. Soft code can categorize that for us more. We'll actually probably get rid of several file cabinets over the next couple okay, of years of space. Um, you know, those and right now they're using hand calculators. Yes. With for, QuickBooks. Yes, for yeah, you know, and they, they then, go there and then Spillman comes out and says this we might have something similar in a couple of years. Got it. Well, I, that's talked. not the, the problem I have. The problem I have is if it doesn't work. I mean the way it says the way everybody says it's supposed to do all this, that's what my concern is when you have something new only used by one county in the state. That that's just my hesitation. It's a lot of money to put something in that is supposed to do this and may have some And you said Ada's problems. using it? Correct. For yeah, over a year. Well, that one county is three of us. So from a volume counties? perspective, that's they probably a good test. They do a lot of it. Yeah, again, and that's, that's the hardest part about Idaho to, to judge on that is we are predominantly the next in line after Ada on the number of processes we do. And so we can't go look at smaller ones because they just want it does it's not feasible mm -hmm. for right. them mm -hmm. uh, but i can tell you that when you reach out to civil agencies around the, around idaho who are using stolen they are just as frustrated with us on on trying to get things moving or trying to mm -hmm. and we've we've reached out to them to say hey Spillman, will you do more if we rally as a group and they are just sluggish and slow it's not in their wheelhouse their wheelhouse sure. is report management and those kinds of things right. Not silly. Okay. All right. Just to make it in simple terms for everybody, I know you need a car, but do you need this car, like with all the bells and whistles, because it says it's going to do all this, but actually it breaks down after five years, or do you need this car? So that that's only my concern. I just want to make sure that if this goes forward, that this will not be a, a nightmare and a headache. An so, impediment. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's just my concern. From what I've. From the from the what we've been championed, these people have been nothing but bending over backwards with us. Now again, I know some of it's a sales pitch, okay. but we reach out. They're immediately let me get you to the right avenue and the right person. Um, again, Ada's been using it for almost two years. They've had nothing good to say. Or, uh, nothing good. They have <laughs> nothing, nothing oh, to say. Good stuff and the, and the right. Right. Dan, um, Dan, you wanted to Dan, jump in. Yeah, I, I don't want to be the kid at the end of the class to start asking questions so um, but there is one thing that I want to make sure that Leslie you got your answers on the travel training stuff that's one that I, I, I mean I guess we can take up tomorrow yeah uh, uh, but I, look tomorrow I wouldn't want to if, if I don't have to I don't want to bring everybody here and, and so you shouldn't uh, have to. Um, I, I, I think uh, a 
just want to make sure that is something we are going to cover tomorrow because that's usually a fairly complicated one. Which sure. one is this now? The oh, travel train. Yeah, I'll yeah. make sure that I look over that tonight and email you with questions okay. ahead of time. And, so. and we have the detail in this workbook that I'll yes. send out the purple tabs at the right include all the travel and training supplements by work set. Yeah. So, so what I'm aware of now in my brain is that we're going to be talking about the personnel stuff tomorrow, we're going to talk about the travel training stuff. Is there anything specifically, Dina or anybody else, that we need to know about ahead of the time that we can prep for? I don't think so. I think whatever we flag that requires further work on your part, I think we've already identified. Uh, what I am going to do is I have a two-page description for my co-commissioners here on Pulse Point. I know we eliminated it, but you have it. Could, you, could I give it to you? Take a look at it anyway. We leave it off. We leave it off. Is that it? I believe that's it for now. Thank okay. you so much Thank you for everyone. everyone's attention I, and focus. I think we made some serious strides early in the process. Yes, we did. Thank you again, Dean. <coughs> Thank you, everyone. Public comment? None. 401, meeting adjourned. Thank you. 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 Thank you.